Hey friends, welcome back to another Extreme Budget Challenge. I'm excited to share with you that I'll be announcing a cash giveaway later in the video. Today, I'm making dinner for a family of four for a week for $15, so that's seven meals for $15. I've designed this for a family with two adults and two children. This is an extreme, extreme challenge. I'm basically just gonna come up with meals that I would like to eat if I were eating for $15 a week. I would expect for you to modify this to meet your needs. This is just to get some ideas. The hardest part of extreme budget eating is planning. So I'm just hoping to ease that burden for some of my viewers. Another tool to saving money on food is having ingredients that are interchangeable in your recipes. So for example, buying one ingredient that can be used in several recipes. And that's what I've done in this menu. These are all of the items that I'll be eating this week and I have a delicious menu planned. I'll also show you an option where you can add on some meat to this menu for those that wanna do that. But more on that in a minute. At the end of the video, I'll let you know how this worked out for me and if I have any suggestions or changes that I would make to this meal plan. I have two pounds of rice and I just grabbed this brown rice out of the pantry, but I'm actually going to be using white rice. And if you're following this budget, you would be purchasing the great value two pounds of long grain white rice. My Walmart actually had brown rice for about 22 cents cheaper than the white. If your family likes brown rice, I would go ahead and get that because it's definitely better for you. If you're like me and you buy your rice and beans in bulk, you'll actually be spending less on this extreme budget challenge. You'll need two pounds of white beans and I already had these great northern beans in my pantry. They're actually from Dollar Tree, but costs are about the same at Walmart. I think it was two cents more at Walmart. I plan to make a white bean chili with these. Navy beans would work here also and actually might work even better because they do kind of fall apart and make a nice thick broth. So if you have that or if they're cheaper, go ahead and get those. I have one pound of black beans, but you can substitute these for pinto beans. I'm planning on making a tortilla soup and I thought they would be beautiful in the soup, but obviously many different kind of beans would work in that. So you could really just go with whatever's on sale or whatever's cheapest. I have 30 tortillas here. My dilemma in this challenge was whether or not I should have purchased 80 tortillas instead of 30, but I would have had to give up the sour cream. And by the way, this is supposed to be great value sour cream, but for some reason I ended up with this. So if you're doing this menu, you'll want to get the great value, which I think is a great product. I'm going to go ahead and make this menu and then at the end I'll let you know whether I think you should skip the sour cream and get the extra tortillas. If you have a larger budget, you can add a rotisserie or a fresh chicken to this. I picked mine up for $5 at Sam's Club, but the last fresh chicken I got was $5.50 in my area and they're a little bit cheaper at Aldi. I'll show some menu options with and without the chicken. I got a great deal on the cilantro, but it's already wilting, so I'm going to put this in some water and set it in the fridge, and hopefully it'll start to revive a little bit. For my first recipe, I'm making tortilla soup. This has to be one of my all-time favorite soups. In fact, I included this on the very first video that I made on my channel. I'll show two versions, one without chicken and one with. You can use either vegetable or chicken bouillon for your base. If you end up purchasing a fresh chicken, then obviously you can make your own broth if you want and use that. I'm using some onion powder here, but obviously if you have onions, then certainly use fresh and then I would start this whole process out by cooking those in a little oil in the bottom of the pan until they're translucent and then adding in the broth. I'm using the fire roasted diced tomatoes. At my Walmart, they're about 24 cents more than the regular diced tomatoes. So if you wanna go with the regular, you can, but I do love the fire roasted. They're my favorite for this soup. I plan the menu to have this meal two nights during the week. So if you wanna make an extra large pot, you can. However, this is very quick to throw together, especially if you cook your beans all in one sitting. And before adding the black beans to this dish, you're gonna to wanna to rinse them very, very well. Otherwise, they're gonna turn your soup a black color and it's not gonna be very appetizing. You can use any kind of bean that you want, but I thought black beans would look nice in the soup. I'm gonna taste it now and adjust the seasonings. It actually tastes perfect to me, so I'm gonna leave it as is. I've pulled some of the soup out and placed it in another pan. If you're not adding chicken, this would be the version you'll make. I'm adding a quarter cup of rinsed rice to this. You can use a little rice in the chicken one as well if you want, but I wanted to show it plated without it because that's actually my favorite way to eat it. But if you're trying to fill tummies and feel more satiated, adding a little rice to the soup is gonna help with that, and it doesn't take very much rice at all. 
I love to use chicken or other meats in soups, stews, or chilies because it stretches so far. This is about half of a breast and I probably should have diced these into a little bit smaller chunks. You want to add your chicken in at the very end of cooking so that it's nice and tender. And if you prefer, you can cook this in your crock pot. We have to conserve the cheese, so I'm going to cut it in half and then cut that half into half again. I'll use one segment for the toppings for this meal. The magic in this dish is in the toppings. I think my favorite topping is tortilla strips. However, they do all work together to make some serious magic on your taste buds. I have the tortilla strips, the chopped cilantro, the shredded cheddar, some sliced jalapeno, and half of the avocado. You'll use the other half for the second night that you have tortilla soup. Here is the one without chicken. This is super filling with the rice and it has such amazing flavor. You have the creaminess of the avocado and the chewiness of those crispy tortilla strips balanced with the freshness of cilantro and the crispy texture of the jalapenos. Here's what it looked like before the toppings. As you can see, it's quite thick. If you want, you could put a little less rice than I put in mine. And here is the chicken tortilla soup. You'll probably want to add some rice into the chicken soup to make it more filling, but I did want to show it to you this way because like I said earlier, it is my favorite way to eat this soup. I recommend that whoever the cook is, that they distribute the toppings because otherwise somebody will probably take too much of the cheddar or too much of the avocado. This is definitely an extreme, extreme budget. So we don't have enough supplies for everyone to have as much as they want, obviously. That being said, I was quite satisfied with it just like this. And this is how every bowl can look with our supplies. I made tortilla strips that I cut in half and then some that I left in long strips and I realized when I was plating that I definitely like the long strips better, but that's just personal preference. How to cook beans and the decision to salt while cooking or not is a highly debated subject. I was reading this article on Epicurious and they tried all of these different cooking methods for beans. I'm usually a person that likes to soak their beans overnight, but they did a test and found that soaking only saves 10 minutes of cooking time. Obviously, if you have an Instapot, this doesn't apply to you, but they found that a quick soak method worked best. And in this method, they bring the beans to a boil and then let them soak for an hour off of the heat before returning to the stove to cook until they're finished. I like the idea of this because there are so many times where I forget to soak my beans the night before. In their study, soaking overall didn't save much on cooking time, but flavor-wise, they said that the quick soak was their preferred method. They thought that the beans had the best flavor, and they also said to make sure that you cook in your soaking liquid. And if you wash your beans carefully beforehand, you're not going to mind doing that. Make sure when you add your green chilies in that you didn't accidentally purchase the hot kind. You definitely want to have mild chilies unless your family likes their food very spicy. Chicken bouillon or chicken broth is a common ingredient here and you would just add it in to taste. I prefer to use vegetable bouillon in mine and I just ran out and I can't seem to find it in any of the stores right now. So I'm just going to be using a very small amount of not chicken bouillon. If you don't have any of these, that's fine. It's still going to have a lot of flavor even without it. And I probably should have done this before I added the green chilies. I thought I would take out a small amount and add it into my blender just to puree it, but I realized the beans were soft enough. I could just use my strainer and kind of mash them that way, but I'm doing this in order to make the soup thicker. If you need to make this stretch a little bit further, you can always add in some rice and just make sure you're adding in enough liquid to the line in the pot that feeds your family. I think every cook knows where that line is. Ideally, you have a pan that's big enough to where you can make enough for dinner for two nights for your family, so you can just cook once and eat twice, but I'm only making one pound of the beans because I'll be the only one eating this. And this year, we discovered that even the stems of cilantro are good. In fact, I would say it might even have more flavor than the ends. This chili is delicious without anything else. You could get away with eating it just like this. You might be wondering why I have all my toppings on the side like this and it's because I like to add the toppings then eat some of it then add some more toppings and eat some more well you get the picture for me the toppings are what elevate this dish to a 10. You might be thinking that cheddar cheese would also be good on this and I would have to agree 
but I'm saving the cheese for my other recipes. I think if it were me, I would forego the sour cream and get a bigger thing of tortillas because the tortillas are definitely my favorite topping. But if you get both, you'll have to limit yourself to about one fried tortilla shell per person here. If you want more tortillas for the same cost, you always have the option of buying maseca and making them yourself. Every pound of maseca makes 38 tortillas, or you could get some flour out of your pantry, mix it with some water, salt, and oil, and make flour tortillas. Those are super simple to make. It just takes some time. If you're including a chicken as part of this budget challenge, then I would add half of a chopped breast for every pound of beans. Again, a little goes a really long way here. I thought cheese enchiladas would make another great meal. I've made these one other time on my channel. They're super easy to make. For the enchilada sauce, you'll make a roux, just like if you were making a gravy. You start out with some oil and flour, then you're gonna add some pepper if you want. I always like to add pepper in mine. And then you're gonna add in a generous amount of chili powder. The amount that you're gonna add in really just depends on how much sauce you're making. For my sauce, I added about one and a half tablespoons. But this is something that's really easy to make, so I wouldn't stress about it too much. You're not going to mess it up, but you're just going to want to cook this in there with the flour and the oil mixture. And then once it's done or you feel like it's cooked for a little while, then you're going to go ahead and add in your broth. And the broth can be whatever you want it to be. It can be chicken bouillon, you can use chicken tomato bouillon, which I think is what I'm using here, or you can use vegetable bouillon if you wanna do a vegetarian or vegan enchilada. And then you just pour that in, and then you're gonna whisk it, just like you would do if you were making a brown gravy. And then I would add in the tomato sauce, and that gives it a really nice flavor against the flavor of that chili. And I would just pour in the amount of tomato sauce that tastes good to you. I also added in some garlic powder and I know some people like to add in cumin, but I didn't add any to mine and that's pretty much it for the enchilada sauce. This is an easy way to make enchilada sauce with ingredients that most all of my viewers are already gonna have in their pantry. Obviously, if you wanna make more authentic sauce with dried chilies and whole tomatoes and onions and garlic, you can certainly do that by rehydrating the chilies and then putting everything in the blender and doing it that way. But this is just a really easy way to do it with ingredients that everyone already has on hand. The last time I made these, I coated the tortillas in the enchilada sauce and then filled them with cheese, which is definitely a messy way to do it. Next time, I'll just spoon a little of the enchilada sauce into the baking pan and then spoon some of the sauce on the inside of the tortilla. It would be a much easier way to do it. But I had wanted to try this method at least once and it did turn out to be some very delicious enchiladas. Here I'm showing chicken enchiladas that I made with canned chicken. But obviously if you purchase a chicken you can probably get enough from the legs and the underside of the chicken to fill your enchiladas. It really doesn't take very much at all. And be careful when you're making the cheese enchiladas to not overfill them because you only need a small amount. This is such an inexpensive and delicious meal to make that I think it should be in everyone's meal rotation. I like to make a big batch of these because they're so good for leftovers. I got these pans at Dollar Tree and they're perfect for enchiladas. I plate the meal just like this and then cover it with foil and then throw it in the toaster oven the next day to reheat it. It makes for such a quick meal and enchiladas are my all-time favorite leftover meal. For the rice, I just used my Aroma rice cooker, which is one of my favorite kitchen appliances. It makes perfect rice every time. I added a little bouillon in with the water and then poured that over the rice. I think here I'm using tomato chicken bouillon. You can also add some dried parsley to give it some visual interest if you want, but this is always so good. Just make sure that your dish is covered when reheating so that your rice doesn't dry out. About a year ago, I took my friend to dinner for her birthday. We went to a Mexican restaurant in San Clemente. I had these cheese enchiladas with black beans and white rice. They were so expensive and I remember thinking at the time that my enchiladas were so much better. And I think I made mine at that time for 74 cents, which probably would be around a dollar now for the plate that I made. I just looked at current pricing for that restaurant 
and it's almost $17 for the plate and that doesn't even include drinks. Okay, now let's talk about the fun stuff. I'm doing a $100 Visa gift card giveaway. To enter to win, you have to be publicly subscribed to my channel, like and comment on this video and turn on all notifications. The winner will be picked by a random name generator and announced December 19th via community post. So make sure you've turned on all notifications so that you'll receive that post. I have one final meal to show you. I'll be using one fourth of the stick of cheddar and you'll need some bouillon for this. I'm using the tomato bouillon. I would prefer the vegetable, but I'm out, so that'll be fine. I'm just gonna mix that together with some water and then I'll grate up this cheese so that I have all of my ingredients ready. I'll be using some of the rice and I have some pre-cooked white rice here along with some cooked black beans that have been rinsed and drained. And then I just have some spices that I thought would be good in this. I have chili powder, granulated onion, and paprika. I also have some garlic. Have you ever wondered what the difference between chili powder and paprika is? They're both basically chili peppers, but chili powder has some other seasonings in it, so it also has some garlic in there. My paprika is Spanish, so it's got a smoky flavor, which if you watch me regularly, you know I'm a huge fan of. So I'll probably use both of those. I'm also going to use some onion powder. If you have regular onions, then feel free to use those. And I'll also be using some garlic powder. I've diced up one tomato, but I'm only going to be making one serving. So I'll try to use just one fourth of the tomato. I was doing one of my dollar a day challenges when I discovered how much I like rice that is made like this. Basically, it's the same style that you would make egg fried rice where you cook the rice first. And in this case, I'm cooking the rice from a cold state so that the texture on my rice is gonna turn out perfect. Some recipes have you make one pot dishes, but I find that those can create mushy rice and I'm super picky about my rice. I want it to have the right texture. Once this is smoothed out a bit, I'll add my black beans and then I'll add a small amount of the broth. And since I ended up making two servings, I did add some more of the tomato in. Then I gave it a taste test and adjusted my spices. I added a little more garlic powder and then some more paprika. Then I added in my chopped cilantro and I did hold some back to plate with. You have a few options of how you would eat this if you eat according to the menu. If you're feeding four people, then you're only going to be able to have one tortilla per person for this last meal. And you can use your cheese in the tortilla, kind of like I did here, or you can sprinkle the cheese on top and melt it and then just have a regular tortilla on the side. But I'm gonna try it like this first and I added a few extra pieces of fresh tomato and cilantro and this really was delicious. I thought this was such a nice meal. And then I tried it with melted cheese and I thought that was good too. It's definitely a rich dish. So adding a little acid to it in the form of some Louisiana hot sauce, or in this case, crystal, which I guess is Louisiana hot sauce, or if you have some salsa, or maybe even just some Taco Bell packets laying around, that would be really good. And then of course you can add chicken to this if you have any left, but it just really did seem to hit the spot. I tried this along with some tortilla chips, and that was really good too. I guess I could have fried the tortilla into chips, but that doesn't really seem like enough to fry up. I think corn would be a nice addition to this mix, along with some green onions. And then if you have any sour cream left over, which you might not at this point, but that's another option as well. 
In conclusion, I thought this was a really nice menu with delicious food. I think if I'm feeding a family of four, I probably would have skipped getting the sour cream and used that money to buy one more pound of rice. There's enough to pull off the menu, but nothing extra. There are so many things you can do with that extra rice. I'll leave some tips for you in the description area of my video. Don't forget to enter for the cash giveaway. Make sure and subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button and comment so you'll be entered in the giveaway. Thanks so much for watching, friends. I'll see you Sunday. Morning has broken. My windows are open. Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way. Sometimes I give up, just wanna be on my